Well, everybody, John Bornstein here, and this is Cable Lane. Today in our study of experiencing God day by day, the title is rather simple, but it is quite profound. Born again. What does that mean? Let me take your attention to John chapter 3 for a moment. In verse 3 we read, Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, Dr. Henry Blackaby challenges us in this study with these profound words. Listen to this. Entering a saving relationship with Christ is a life-changing experience. All things become new. Not some things, but all things. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. For the first time in your life, Christ is Lord. God is master. When you become a Christian, Christ's presence will affect every part of you. You have new thoughts, new attitudes, new values, and new sensitivity. New priorities will dramatically affect your relationships. Christianity is not something you add to your life. It is life. Now we think about that. This conversation, mind you, in John chapter 3 was because Nicodemus, one of the Pharisees, was having this conversation with Jesus. All he knew was religion. And religion were all these do's and don'ts that really had evolved out of the 613 ordinances of the Torah laws. But on top of that, man had added over a thousand new regulations and commands. So as a Pharisee, that's all he knew was what he could do and what he couldn't do. He had no religion relationship with God, technically. They were just going through the motions of feeling like this is a right thing to do, that's a wrong thing to do, and hoping that through those efforts you have appeased the God of the universe. And what Jesus is showing him, that a man must be born again. And when that happens, when they accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, they receive a new mind. In Romans chapter 12, verse 2, we see that we're washed and renewed. The way we think changes. We receive a new heart, as was prophesied in Ezekiel 36, 26. And we even receive the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. So it's no longer our way of thinking, our way of doing things. Rather, Jesus Christ becomes Lord of our lives. And as 1 Corinthians 6 tells us, He moves in. The Holy Spirit takes up this space. It's the Ark of the Covenant on two legs. You become a dwelling place of the Most High who then moves through you to do His glorious work and purposes in this world. You become a a mouthpiece for God. You become a dwelling place for His intimacy with you. In Romans chapter 8, he talks about that we can now pray directly to Him. We don't have to go through another. The Holy Spirit will take your prayer request right to the Father and Jesus Christ is right there at the right hand of the Father interceding for you. What an intimate relationship. Dr. Blackaby has these powerful words for us as we close today. Think about this. He says, you become sensitive to sin, so you are no longer comfortable with it. Your recreation will be affected as you are made aware of what is honoring to God and what is not. Your relationships will now be guided by the Holy Spirit. Destructive habits and attitudes previously immune to change will be transformed. Have you noticed the changes God has brought to your life since you entered a vital relationship with Jesus Christ? These changes should be very noticeable as a testimony of the new life you received when you trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. And brothers and sisters, that is the key. As you are watching this video, If you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, that is the key to all of this. It is not something you can just, well, maybe read a book or even by way of a prayer. It it has to be a submission to Jesus Christ. You confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and then you submit to His reigning and ruling in your life and you are spiritually matured in this process we call the sanctification process. God is going to do a glorious work in you and so I'd encourage you today confess that Jesus is Lord, that God raised him from the dead, that he is able to save that which was lost. And you, brothers and sisters, have a hope and a future in him and that Jesus Christ is King and Lord over all. To him be the glory forevermore. I hope you've been encouraged today as we worship the living Lord. Thank you. God bless you, my friends. Take care.